Coming up today, with Chinese President Xi Jinping's trip to Washington a matter of days away, the United States urges China to use its influence over North Korea to get the regime to denuclearize. Diffusing concerns over Japan's new security policy, Korea says it will reject any U.S. request for the entry of Japanese armed forces onto the Korean peninsula. Plus, Hungary's army is given new powers to use tear gas and rubber bullets against refugees. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6am on Tuesday, September 22nd here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning. The United States plans to use China's hefty influence over North Korea to uh, steer the regime away from developing more nuclear weapons. Speaking a few days before Chinese President Xi Jinping's uh, visit to Washington this week, U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice said the United States and China are equally united in demanding the complete and verifiable denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Rice said the White House will make clear to Beijing that North Korea's nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles threaten regional stability and their respective national security interests. U.S. President Barack Obama and President Xi will hold summit talks in Washington on Friday local time. A Russian military expert says North Korea could have up to 50 nuclear weapons in the next five years. Vladimir Yezeev, a department head at the CIS Countries Institute, made the prediction on Monday in a debate hosted by Moscow state-run Russia Today network. He said North Korea is currently focused on developing nuclear warheads and delivery vehicles. And at its current pace, the regime would be able to build two submarines carrying SLBM or submarine launch ballistic missiles by the year 2020. The expert also warned that certain actions on the Korean Peninsula, such as South Korea's joint military drills with the US, would only provoke the communist state to speed up its nuclear development. U.S. Special Envoy for North Korea policy Sung Kim is scheduled to arrive in South Korea on this Tuesday ahead of a defense conference between Seoul and Washington. He'll meet with senior officials to help coordinate defensive strategies against the North's nuclear weapons and missile threats. EG1 has more. The 8th Korea-U.S. Integrated Defense Dialogue is set to open Wednesday in Seoul. The U.S.'s chief envoy to the six-party nuclear talk, Sung Kim, is to attend a two-day meeting, which will be led by South Korean defense official Ryu Jae-sung and Shin Jae-yeon from the Foreign Affairs Ministry. Their focus will be on military defense against North Korea's test firing of long-range missiles and a possible fourth nuclear test. Both sides are also expected to establish strategic plans to counter provocations from the North and nuclear disarmament. This includes enacting and developing an operational plan to track and destroy such weapons in case of emergency. According to a recent report by U.S.-based website 38 North, there have not been any visible changes at the Pungeri nuclear test site since August. Satellite images taken earlier this month showed no activity there, despite growing speculation of a possible North Korean nuclear test. But it added the west portal area of the facility, which was the site of nuclear tests held in 2009 and 2013, had two new buildings constructed at the entrance, which are likely being used as guard posts to control access to the area. Lee ji Arirang News. The UN Commission of Inquiry says the international community must find a way to punish those responsible for committing crimes against humanity in North Korea in order to improve the country's dire human rights situation. Speaking at a panel discussion in Geneva on Monday, Mazuki Deruzman, the UN Special Rapporteur on North Korea, 
noted how the Commission has reported and adopted resolutions on Pyongyang's human rights violations, but they have yet to see any improvements. He called for the establishment of a system that ensures those responsible for crimes against humanity are held accountable. Chairman of the Commission, Michael Kirby, said it was the obligation of the international community to respond to the situation in North Korea and have those matters properly investigated. President Park and Hay says reunification of the two Koreas and Northeast Asian issues will top her agenda when she heads to the UN headquarters in New York this week. Lee Su Eun reports. In a meeting with her senior secretaries, President Park and Hay gave an overview of what she'll be talking about at the UN General Assembly next Monday. She plans on highlighting reunification of the two Koreas with hopes that it will lead to better understanding and support from the international community. Ahead of our UN address, President Park will be in New York from September 25th to participate in the UN Sustainable Development Summit. There, she will speak to leaders and raise Korea's presence by showing its commitment to helping global issues. Speaking on matters at home, President Park emphasized that a more positive outlook is needed in order to bring about economic recovery for Korea. She drew attention to Standard & Poor's recent upward revision of the nation's credit rating to AA-, which came despite negative views on the local economy. Stressing that government-led efforts towards labor market reform attributed to the rating upgrade, the president urged relevant legislation be passed at the National Assembly as soon as possible. Lee Su Eun, Arirang News. Turning now to Korea's reaction to Japan's controversial security policy changes. And Seoul's defense chief says the Korean government has the right to reject any U.S. request to deploy Japanese forces to the Korean peninsula in an emergency situation. Kim Hyun-bin reports. South Korea's defense minister Han min gu said on Monday that Seoul has the final authority to reject any U.S. request to deploy Japan's self-defense forces on Korean soil during wartime. During a parliamentary inspection at the Ministry of National Defense in Seoul, Han stressed that despite the U.S. having wartime operational control in the event of war, South Korea's president has supreme command and must give permission for overseas troops to fight on Korean soil. In a related matter, Japan's new security policy will be front and center of defense talks next month involving South Korea, the United States, and Japan. A government official in Seoul says the three countries will discuss follow-up measures after Japan lays out the details of the changes to its policy. The date and location of the meeting are yet to be confirmed, but it's expected talks will be held before the annual Korea-U.S. Security Consultative Meeting scheduled for mid-October. Seoul plans to reiterate a stance that Japan will not be allowed to dispatch troops to the Korean Peninsula in an emergency situation without the Korean government's prior consent. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. South Korea and Japan are reportedly pushing for a foreign minister's meeting this month. A diplomatic source said Monday that the two countries are fine-tuning details of the meeting, likely to take place on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly session in New York. If the meeting does take place, it will come ahead of the trilateral summit involving South Korea, China and Japan. That's expected sometime in October or November and will probably happen in Seoul. Speculation is that the respective foreign ministers will coordinate details for a meeting, a summit meeting between President Park Geun-hye and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. More twists and turns in Europe's refugee crisis. Hungary has approved legislation authorizing the government to deploy troops to protect its borders. And this includes the use of non-lethal weapons. Hungary says its troops will now be permitted to use tear gas, rubber bullets and pyrotechnical devices to stop refugees coming across the border. The legal revision came as Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban labelled the mass migration of refugees a, quote, brutal threat to Europe. He also said Europe was being, quote, overrun. This week, we'll see the most intense diplomatic activity on the crisis yet, the highlight being an emergency summit of EU leaders on Wednesday.
Now, after its fall from grace in the U.S. market for cheating emission standards, Volkswagen may be facing disciplinary measures right here in Korea. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency announced last week that the German automaker had programmed almost half a million cars to circumvent U.S. government emissions tests, allowing them to emit pollutants over 40, 40 times the legal limit. These cars have since been recalled and the company has halted sales of Volkswagen and Audi models equipped with four-cylinder turbo diesel engines. The Korean government plans to launch investigations itself into emission levels of the affected models. Staying with automotive news and Korean automaker Kia Motors, Sedona has been named the best minivan in the United States ahead of its Japanese and American rivals. The 2015 Kia Sedona minivan topped the analysis uh, conducted by US-based public broadcasting services program MotorWeek together with experts from Cars.com on five of the most popular current models. The Sedona was followed by the 2015 Toyota Sienna and Honda Odyssey. They were evaluated on criteria such as technology, features and performance. This is just the latest win for the Sedona as well. In July, it won the JD Power Automotive Performance Execution and Layout Award in the minivan segment. Korea's growth outlook has been trimmed by various financial institutions. They're predicting Korea's GDP to fall uh, to the low 2% range this year, and that would be the lowest level in six years. Kwon Soa reports. About a one percentage point drop in the country's economic growth compared to last year's 3.3% is what many financial institutions are forecasting for Korea's GDP this year. If that holds true, it could be the worst result since the aftermath of the global financial crisis in 2009, when it posted 0.7 percent growth. The average outlook from 36 global institutions stands at 2.5 percent, but major financial agencies like Morgan Stanley and Moody's estimate that Korea's GDP growth will only reach 2.3 percent. Nomura Securities forecasts 2.2 percent growth and DKB 2.1. One of the biggest culprits behind Korea's slowing growth is sluggish exports, which have posted negative results for every month this year, mainly due to weak demand from China. But that's not all. We already saw less than 2.5 percent growth in the first half of the year, but in the second half there are even more factors of concern, especially due to global uncertainty such as a possible U.S. interest rate hike. Domestic institutions have also downgraded a longer-term potential growth rate. LG Research Institute estimates Korea's GDP will grow by an average 1.7 percent between 2020 and 2030. As the world economy shifts from a manufacturing base to a more service-orientated one, and with developing countries such as China advancing in terms of technology, it has become much more difficult to improve productivity. When factoring in Korea's aging population, a downward trend in the workforce population is expected to begin within the next two years, which is why experts stress the need for next-generation growth engines to be discovered as soon as possible. Konsua, Arirang News. Staying with economic news, a new public fund aimed at tackling youth unemployment was launched on Monday. President Park geun was the first to dip into her pocket with a sizable donation. Won Jang-ho has the details. 20 million won, or roughly 17,000 US dollars, and 20% of her future paychecks. That's the amount President Park geun is putting into the newly launched Youth Hope Fund. The fund that the president took initiative in will be used to set up a foundation that will work on to boost jobs for the younger generation. The government will give a 15% tax break on donations to the fund, while a 25% break will be given for amounts exceeding roughly 26,000 US dollars. KEB Hanna Bank was first to receive donations on Monday, with four other banks to follow suit on Tuesday. Our focus is more on luring individuals to this fund rather than large companies. The public can also make contributions even without large amounts of capital and without complicated hurdles. 
but concerns linger over whether the fund was put together too hastily, as the plan was announced just under a week ago. There's no point if you use this money without a plan or end up spending it haphazardly. It would be best if the government takes their hands off it as soon as possible and lets it run its own as a social enterprise. There's also no long-term plan in place. The government has not set up a cap on the fund, simply saying that it will continue to take donations until the youth unemployment crisis is alleviated. Kwon Jang-ho, Airang News. Well, those are the stories we have for you on this Tuesday morning here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Have a wonderful day and thank you as always for watching. Goodbye.